And here we are back again with a new lesson in the geometry. Today we are doing Chapter 2, Section 2, Inductive and Deductive Reasoning. You do not have to write down every example, but I do need you to write down at least the definitions of inductive reasoning, conjectures, deductive reasoning, law of detachment, and syllogism. Those are the things we're talking about. And make sure you pay good attention to the examples so you know how these are used. Inductive reasoning is reasoning that uses a number of specific examples to arrive at a conclusion. A concluding statement reached using inductive reasoning is called a conjecture. A conjecture is an unproven statement. So we look at something, we see, oh, it appears to be this way, uh, and then we make our conjecture from that. That is our conjecture. Uh, write a conjecture that describes the pattern in each sequence. Then use the conjecture to find the next term in the sequence. So here are our movie show times. 8.30, 9.45, 11, 12.15. Look at these numbers closely. See what you notice. Whatever you notice is where we make our conjecture. Okay, We notice right here that it appears every movie time is one hour and 15 minutes apart. Now we can make a conclusion from this. We can draw a conclusion from our conjecture saying that the next movie show time will be at 1.30 p.m. Okay, here's another example. If you look at these shapes. Okay, here we have 4, 10, 18, 28, 40, What would be the next number in this sequence? Plus 6, plus 8, plus 10, plus 12. The next number in the sequence should be plus 14. So the next number would be 54. The conjecture here is the next image or figure will have 54 segments. All right, make a conjecture about each value or geometric relationship. List or draw some examples that support your conjecture. The sum of two odd numbers. Okay, let's look at a few examples here. 1 plus 3 is 4. Okay, two other odd numbers, 1 and 5, gives us 6. Let's look at a couple more examples. 3 plus 5 is 8. 7 plus 9 is 16. What do you notice about the answers? It appears that every answer is even. Well, in this case, every answer is even, so it appears that the sum of two odd numbers is an even number, based on our few examples here. A counterexample is finding one example of a conjecture that shows the conjecture is not true. So in order for the conjecture to be proven, for it to be true, it always has to be true. For it to be false, you only have to find one example of it being false. For example, if n is a real number, then n squared is greater than n. Let's see if that's true for all real numbers. Let's take n equals 1. In this case, the conjecture is false, since n squared is not greater than n. In this case, 1 squared is 1, and that's not greater than 1. So that's a counterexample. Shows that the conjecture was not true. If jk is equal to k, uh, kl, then k is the midpoint of jl. Is that always true? Can we come up with an example where k is not the midpoint? Well, for example, if J, K, L are not collinear. If they're not on one straight line, then K doesn't have to be the midpoint of the two, but the distance could still be equal. All right. Now let's look at deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning uses facts, rules, and definitions, or properties, to reach logical conclusions from given statements. We've got two laws of logic that we'll be using. Law, the law of detachment, which says if 
P if our hypothesis this, then Q. If this is a true statement as a whole, and P is a true statement, then Q also has to be true. So if we know that this statement is true, if P is Q, and then someone tells us, well, P is true, then we know that Q has to be true. That's the law of detachment. The law of syllogism, if P then Q and Q then R are both true, then from P we can conclude R. Okay, so get you some colors here. There. From these two, this go. If this concludes this, and from that one we conclude the third, then from the first we conclude the third. Oh, here we go. Okay, let's look at a few examples. First off, is it inductive or deductive reasoning? Every time Katie has worn her favorite socks to a softball game, she has gotten at least one hit. Katie is wearing her favorite socks to a game tonight, so she concludes that she will get at least one hit. Based on a pattern of observation. These are not facts here. This is observation. So we have used inductive reasoning, or she has used inductive reasoning. If John is late making his car insurance payment, he will be assessed a late fee of $50. John's payment is late this month, so he concludes that he will be assessed a late fee of $50. This is based on facts and rules, so this is deductive reasoning. Example 2. Is it valid or invalid based on given information? We are given this information. If two angles form a linear pair, then, then their non-common sides are opposite rays. Angle A ED and AEB form a linear pair. Our conclusion is that ED and EB are opposite rays. This is valid argument based on the law of detachment. Is it valid or invalid based on the given information? If Micah goes to the beach, she will wear sunscreen. Micah is wearing sunscreen. Conclusion, Micah is at the beach. Is that necessarily true? She might be at the beach, but she might be elsewhere. So this is an invalid argument. She could be wearing sunscreen at the pool. Okay, another example. Is it valid or invalid based on the given information? If you are 16 years old, then you can apply for a driver's license. Nate is 16 years old. All right, that's what we know. So our hypothesis is if you're 16 years old, the conclusion you can apply, apply for a driver's license. Given that P is true, we can use the law of detachment to make a valid conclusion that says Nate can apply for a driver's license. All right, and state which law of logic is used to reach the conclusion. If you get a job, then you will earn money. If you earn money, then you will buy a car. You get a job. If you get a job, then you will buy a car, is our conclusion. All right, notice here, one, two, three. If this is true, then we can conclude this one. We call that the law of syllogism. All right, that was chapter two, section two. You've learned inductive reasoning, conjectures, deductive reasoning, the law of detachment, the law of syllogism. Tune in again next time when it's time for a lesson with the mastermind.